children. So mine will not be a long discussion like this. I am not a medical expert. I'm only an economist and we try to economize everything. So I will economize even the speech. To create the scenario for what we what I want to say. Uh, when Dr. Lars was speaking, he mentioned the speech of the president uh, at the inauguration of one of the uh, medical facilities here in Abuja some few weeks ago, in this January. And uh, I decided to pull out that speech. Here is what he said. I recast. I am hopeful that our women will no more be dying needlessly doing, during childbirth. I am also hopeful that our children will no more be dying needlessly as a result of vaccine preventable diseases or common ailment. I am also hopeful that access to health care will not be limited because of lack of money to pay. And then, after all the hopefulness, it now began with assurance. I assure Nigerians that government will continue to ensure that great number of Nigerians have access to quality basic health care services and that basic, basic health care provision fund is in the process of being implemented. And finally, that the provisions of quality health care services will reverse the poor health indices in the country. And to begin, I said it's necessary that we look at the what he called the poor health indices in the country. For a message, here's what we have for under five mortality rates and the maternal mortality rate. The pass represents under five mortality rate, while the line represents maternal mortality rate. And we know that uh, under five mater mater um, mortality rate is calculated on the basis of 1,000 life deaths, while maternal mortality rate is calculated on the basis of 100,000 life deaths. So we see something very catchy here. In 2008, on the five mortality rate stood at 141 deaths per 1,000. It came down to 136 in 2009, down to 109 in 2015. So we have a, big, a decline rate of 22.78 percent. Very impressive between 2008 and 2015. But when we look at maternal mortality rate, we see a different scenario. Between 2008 and 2015, it was going up and coming down, going up and coming down. And by 2015, the rate exceeded that of 2008. The rate was slightly below that of 2008 in 2015. 829 deaths per 100,000 life deaths in 2008, uh, 88 per in 2009, that's going up. If you look at the chart again, you will see that it moved up from very low rate in 2008, the line, the red line, from this point in 2008, moving up in 2009, and started coming down, until 2015. And we see that the end of seven year period we only recorded 1.81% decline in the rate. Um, is manageable to some extent, though not impressive as that of child health. But we say it's not enough to look at the rate. What if 
there are many more women that are giving birth in a particular year. And we're only looking at the rate. We may not be given the true picture of deaths. So we decided to look at the crude number of deaths. For all the five deaths, we have impressive decline, just like what we have for the mortality rate. This is the number of deaths of children that could not see their fifth birthday, that could not live up to their fifth birthday, and the number of women that died out of child health, child birth related complications. We found out that while there was impressive decline in under five deaths, in the crude number of under five deaths, there was rather an upward movement in maternal deaths. Look at it. Between 2008 and 2015, the number, the crude number of under five deaths declined by 11.05%. Whereas between 2008 and 2015, maternal deaths in crude number increased by 11.54%. So when we are talking of uh, MSCH pumping, we may not begin to think bigger and wider than routine immunization for children, polio immunization, and the rest of them. What about the parents? What about the mothers? Is there any room or any protection for them? We'll see that. This is an extract from a study done by CSJ last year, which they termed a message funding gap. And in that funding gap, we saw the amount needed to fund a message, the entire package, not just immunization of children, and the amount still provided by the federal government, including the donor agency funds that come in for MSCH in Nigeria. From there, we were able to establish the funding gap. In 2010 alone, there was a funding gap of 212 billion naira. When you subtract what was provided by the federal government, the middle line 79.9 billion naira from the 292 billion naira that should have been needed for MSCH. Only in 2010, we had a funding gap of 212 billion naira. And by 2015, it had shot up. We kept piling up the funding gap annually. Until 2015, alone, we had 429 billion naira. And cumulatively, between 2010 and 2015, we had a total funding cap of 1.987 trillion naira. Even if we say let all the capital budget be moved to funding health services, MSCH only, we, we may be left with little for any other sector. The total capital budget for 2017, or the proposed total capital budget, is 2.2 trillion naira. If we subtract this from it, we have less than 300 billion, 300 billion naira for any other set. So we have a very big problem here. Then, uh, Dr. Lars mentioned something about exchange rate issue, the vaccines we are talking about, and the other consumables that we use in our MSCH sector in Nigeria are all important. That means we should be looking at all these things, especially in dollar tax. And because of the because of the exchange rate issue, we realized that instead of this amount five hundred and fifty 
three billion naira needed for MSTH in 2015. As of 2016, we have over a need of 900 billion naira. Both because of exchange rates and the increase in the population, we must all account for this as we are thinking of MSTH. Now, looking at the 2017 budget, you see the small portion that is in red in this chart. That's, that represents what is budgeted by the federal government for MSCH compared to what is needed. The entire ball is what is needed. And out of what is needed, we only have 2% that is budgeted by the federal government. And that 2% represents 21 billion naira. If we have 21 billion naira out of 901 billion naira, then we have a funding cap of 879.757 billion naira. That is the funding cap for this proposed 2017 budget. I'm not talking of immunization. Uh, Dr. Lars did well by presenting to us the funding cap for only immunization. Over $404 million for 2017 and 2018. But we are looking at the entire box of MSCH and we are seeing funding gap based on what is proposed in the 2017 budget funding gap of 879.757 trillion naira, a billion naira. Usually, someone will say, oh, after all, we, we, we don't need to worry about this. After all, health is, a, is in the concurrent list. Is it, is it true? Health is in the concurrent list. So both the federal government and the states should partake in it. But unfortunately, some states, their entire capital budget is not up to 20 billion now. States that have 70, 80 billion naira total budget, what do you expect should be the proportion of their capital budget? So if we share this amount, the 879 uh, billion naira, equally among all the states and FCT, we have 23.77 billion naira per state. And the question is, is it possible to be done? If the federal government is providing 21 billion with its last share of the federal account of the federation account, will the states be able to take care of the 23 point? 77 trillion naira. So we are faced with a very big problem. And we realized that because there was no single amount allocated to the provision of the basic healthcare uh, provision fund, then it means that the tenet of non discrimination and the increase in inequality, the uh, decrease in inequality in the 2017 proposed budget of the federal government for MSCH does not meet this. Because even when you provide, build your very good building, uh, pay the nurses and the midwives and the doctors all alike, what about the little payments they are supposed to make? There are some households that cannot afford it. Whereas there are some households that can afford even flying their patients outside the country for treatment. So we need to start thinking, why is there high rate of mortality among women? Is it by the rich or by the poor? I will tell you, 90% of the women that die during childbirth are from among the poor class. So there should be deliberate provision 
made for the poor to ensure that we start bringing them into the uh, budget of the federal government. So, these are some of the key pro uh, recommendations. But before I take the recommendations, as I summarize, I would like to highlight something. The reason for not saying uh, funding that effective uh, provision for uh, donor agencies and the rest of them, as I stated here, is because we know that by becoming one of the big boys in Africa, uh, Nigerian economy growing and the uh, way moving from among the low income countries to lower middle income countries. That most of the total agencies are already existing. Some have existed, some have planned to exit. And uh, it would be nice we keep on banking on what is already leaving us. It's better for us to start planning as though they have left. We see a report to Gavi, report to uh, Global Fund, is because. Before now, they, they have been paying completely for the vaccines that we, we use. But from 2016, we are, paying, we are contributing 20%. This year, we are contributing 40%. So what we are responding to Gabi is actually 40% of the vaccines that uh, Gabi should be bringing to us, Why Gabi takes care of the 60%. And by 2018, we will be paying 60% and Gabi 40%. And it continues like that by 2020, we don't, they don't have anything to contribute to us. So we need to start strategizing. When even the routine immunization we are talking about is withdrawn by Gabi and Global Fund, what happens to the little child in the street whose mother cannot afford other immunization, other vaccines that the child should need? not to talk of the normal, what we call routine immunization. 